Hi, my name is Terry Lynn, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Edpuzzle today and why it would be useful to you when designing your own web-based learning tools or modules. First of all, Edpuzzle is a free tool used to manipulate video clips and create lessons. The great thing about Edpuzzle compared to other video lesson making tools is that it allows you to use your own personal videos or videos that come from anywhere else on the web. It's not restricted to YouTube. In fact, it has a search tool within it that helps you search popular educational video sites such as Khan Academy, EdTalks, National Geographic, and many more. Edpuzzle is easy to use and is also compatible with Google Classroom, has an extension in Chrome that will allow Edpuzzle to give you editing and autosave options when you are viewing a YouTube video, and can even be embedded in class blogs. It gives you the ability to crop and pause the video so that you can embed writing prompts or give reminders to your students about things like taking notes. The extensive options for personalization and differentiation make it incredibly useful when you are designing a web-based learning module. Finally, Edpuzzle provides opportunities for assessment and feedback, including a gradebook function that allows you to track individual progress as students move through your lessons. In terms of learning theory, Edpuzzle connects to behaviorism because it allows the creator to pose questions for the viewer to answer. Both the instructor and the student then receive immediate feedback or reinforcement about their results. It connects to John Keller's ARCS model of motivational design theory as it is interactive and engaging, specifically relevant to learning goals, and provides direct assessment and feedback. A number of Clark and Mayer's instructional design principles are followed by Edpuzzle, making it a good choice to use in your practice. I'll talk about a few of them here. It follows the multimedia principle through the use of video. It also gives you the option to pause the video and import graphics or hyperlinks so that students can explore specific segments further. The contiguity principle is followed because the narration occurs simultaneously with the images in the video, and there are options to break the video into smaller segments. When questions are posed, they appear beside the video so that the student can rewatch the portion of the video that contains the answer if they need to, while still viewing the question. Additionally, feedback to question answers is immediate and appears with the question so students can see exactly where they went right or wrong. The personalization principle is followed because you have options to create your own videos in which you can address the class and their learning goals personally, or you can choose relatable videos from the bank. The questions and voiceovers can also be manipulated to be as personal as you desire. This tool allows you to crop the video so that students only have to view the information that is directly related to their learning goals. You can follow the segmenting principle by pausing the video at key points and posing questions, providing hyperlinks to further information or additional um, images or diagrams, as I mentioned earlier. This ability gives students control over the pacing of the lesson following the learner control principle being allowed to repeat where necessary. So now that you are familiar with some of Edpuzzle's great features and the benefits of using it in your web-based learning tool design, I'm going to quickly show you how it works. When you first go to edpuzzle.com, it will ask you to create an account or sign in using your Google or Edmodo account. As I'm already logged in on this computer, it opens my dashboard right away. Here it lets me see assignments that I have used or created in the past. As you can see, it shows me each of the assignments, their due dates, if I have created one, and this button here allows you to view and print a document of each individual student's progress. Up here on the right is where you can choose to view the gradebook, which shows you class progress across all of the assigned videos, and you can see the button right next to it is where you invite your students to be a part of your class. If you click on this tab here, um, it allows you to look at your content, which shows you each of the videos that you've used or worked on, uh, whether they are assigned to classes or not, and this is where you can click to work on them, continue editing them, um, or assign them to a class with due dates. You can also choose to create a new project, um, including the student project option, which I will tell you a little bit about later. If you don't want to upload your own video and start from scratch, you can search the Edpuzzle database, which is extensive. You can put keywords in here, and then you can see what others have already created using the Edpuzzle category, or you can look for a, a related video at any one of these other locations. If you do decide to create your own video or edit 
someone else's, there's an in-depth show me how video tutorial at every step of the process. But if you're having trouble, feel free to check out some of the tutorials in the resources that I provided below this presentation. Thank you for watching.